Yeah. Okay, we start with the prayer. Let us uh, just be and give permission to every being on this planet to find a home in our heart. Imagine that your heart is like Noah's ark and all the beings of this planet are finding their way to you. Just smile at them and let them take full advantage of the space that is in your heart. And as you see them going in, into your heart by tens and twenties and hundreds and thousands and millions, tell them this place for all of you. Thank you for accepting my hospitality. I have enough to take care of all of you. I have enough to make you happy for the rest of your life. Because all that the Father has, He has given to me. And all that I have, I am giving to you. Please accept me as I have accepted you. And watch the world and all the millions of people who have found a place in your heart rejoice and clap their hands for joy because they have found a home in your being. And then gradually extend yourself and allow the Father to embrace you. And now you lose yourself into the heart of God. This is why you were created. This is why you came into the world. And this is the job and your destiny marked out for you <coughs> before time began. This prayer we make through the Son of God whose Sonship we share. This prayer we make through the Anointed One whose anointment we share. This prayer we make through the Redeemer, whose Redeemership we share as co-redeemers. This prayer we make forever, beginning now. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay. So now we, we are going to, before we... We go ahead just to remind you that this course is ending next week. Next Thursday will be the last lesson, part two. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, we are getting into the lesson, the, the last lesson. But then will you have another class for us? <laughs> next week. Next week, another class. Yeah, but then will there be another session? I don't know. I have nothing prepared. We will think about it after the class. In the meantime, keep this out of your mind. But I wanted to tell you before I forget. So next week, uh, I mean this this get then we can discuss what to do after that. Maybe you'll come next class and we discuss or you'll come with some ideas, whatever it is. I don't. Know. I have no clue. I always wait for the door to open. So. 
you are here for a purpose and I introduced this whole prayer with a purpose that uh, there's nothing you were created with a purpose and in one of the classes I, 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 I hinted or gave it to you that blessed is the one who has found their purpose in this world and uh, for that person nobody can stop that person is, is a dynamic person. That person has his joy, is fulfilled, is happy because somehow he knows that my being and my doing are meshing. When your being and your doing meshes, then you, you, you are it. Then there is no doing and there is no being. There is just you. So you are here for a purpose and the purpose is of the many purposes and uh, the same purpose, now I will show it to you in different words. You are here to give the world all that is good, holy and beautiful. Your purpose here is to give birth to the world, to all that is good, holy and beautiful. So how are you going to do it? By seeing nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, but everywhere to see that which is good, holy and beautiful. That is your purpose. Blessed is the one who has found his or her purpose. So can you now say, I'm going to make this the purpose? I'll give you a list of purposes. So just... And the first thing that will happen is, you know what, to, if you are here to give birth to the good and holy and beautiful, whom will it affect first? Mm -hmm. It will affect you. Mm -hmm. So why not do a favor to yourself and begin to see everything that is good, beautiful. So, you are here to bring the vibration of truth and love. You are here to bring the vibration of truth and love which dissolves all fear, which neutralizes all anger, which takes away all grief, you are here to, to, to show love that takes away fear. Isn't that therefore? When, when you touch anybody who is afraid, that fear turns to love. When you touch anyone who is angry, that angry turns into submission. When you touch anyone who is full of grief, that grief turns to joy. Just your presence, there's no psychological um, Freudian or anybody else to, to teach you methods and this and that, no. Father, what's the sub-word, sub-what? Anger, submission. Submission. Because uh, the one who is angry cannot submit. You touch people who are guilty. and you shower them with forgiveness. You touch people who are resisting everything. And you replace it with submission. touch them and that, that person who is only resisting, resisting, resisting now begins to to submit and becoming willing and peaceful. Why? Because you have found this. 
you are going to see the good, holy and beautiful, that's your purpose in life. And if you are going to see good, holy and beautiful, only that, in the one who is afraid, you will not see the fear. In the one who is angry, you will not see the angry, you will see... In the one who is full of grief, you will not see the grief. You will see that which is good, holy and beautiful in that person. In all these people, you will see only and only this. Nothing else. Yes? Could you explain to me what... Okay, if you're angry and you see the good, the holy, the beautiful... Not you're angry. Somebody else is angry. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Someone else is angry and you focus on the good, holy, the beautiful and they will submit... They will submit to what? They will, so if, if you see someone angry, he becomes submissive. That means now I'm no longer angry, I... Oh, okay, I thought you said they submit, okay. They don't right. submit, they become submissive. So they are not one up on everyone. They say, okay, I can, I can live with it. And therefore, by seeing the good, holy and beautiful, all that you are doing in one word is you say with Christ. My peace I give you. The peace that the world cannot give. I can give it to you because all that I am living for is to see the good, holy and beautiful in you. And if I, if I decide to see only the good, holy and beautiful in the three of you, then I have to, be, I have to give you peace. <laughs> what else can I give you? At the peace that the world cannot give. The world says peace will be God when I have a bigger nuclear weapon than you have. Peace will come when I am able to control you and make you go according to the way I want you to go. Peace will come when you allow me to control you. Whereas here there is no control, nothing. You are saying peace is going to come when I decide to see only the good, holy and beautiful in you and you sense that, that this person who is st standing opposite to me is seeing something good in me and that peace jumps out from the person there without any without any doubt try to do it when you when you're going shopping with the cart and there are so many people <coughs> going the cart here and there i enjoy if on my friday after i come from the va i go shopping with the cart and all i do half the time is smile at the people give them way to go Look at the cashier. I know their names. One, there's a nice little girl. Her name is Rebecca. And I, from far, I say, hi, Rebecca. She said, how do you know my name? I said, it's written there. He <laughs> 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 said, you don't want me to know your name? Take it out from there. And she laughed and she went and made a group of another, another ladies and they were looking at me. Who's that guy? <laughs> That, that's how we shake the world, you know. They are not used to, to being treated well. People come, they want their bag, they want their this, they want to pay the cash and go out and finish to hell with you. You, you are paid a job. We are there to see the good, holy and beautiful in everyone without any, without any, hmm, without any demarcation, without any boundaries. Do you therefore, today, 6th or 7th or 8th of March, except that this is your grand task. This is your grand task. And this is the grand task that you have because for the last these lessons that you have learnt, you have begun to value something very deeply. And what have you begun to value more than you have ever valued in your whole life? 
this few months or these years that you have passed with me, uh, you have begun to, to value your intimacy with God as never before. You have not made an effort, but you have kept yourself open and Thursday after Thursday, Wednesday after Wednesday, come rain or sun or snow or white you, the, you have been coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. That intention itself has made you much more intimate with God than you can ever dream of right now. <coughs> And because you have this great intimacy with God, you have taken this grand task of why? So that your father may be known, loved and glorified by the rest of your sisters and brothers in this world. And that's what Christ called preaching the word of God. And the word of God that you are going to preach is not the Bible. The word of God that you are going to preach are only three. You are good, you are holy, you are beautiful. That's the word of God. I'm not saying that don't read the Bible, I'm not saying there's nothing, <laughs> because my whole life is based on that. But I'm saying here we start, and then you go for that Bible for research, go to, go to all the spiritualities and etc. I'm not downplaying that. And this intimacy with God that we, that, uh, that you have developed, so, so, so radically during this month, you will begin to wonder where where you end and God begins. Remember I told you this, that analogy of the sunbeam and the sun? Where does the sun end and the sunbeam begin? So now your, your, your radical your intimacy with God and the task that He has given is, uh, makes, you, makes, you, makes you much more uh, acceptance of the fact that there is no place where God begins and there is no place where you end. And that brings us to the foundation of my of my, of my Bible spirituality class. If there's nowhere where you end and the Father begins, now you can declare with so much power, the Father and I are one. <laughs> yeah. If there's nowhere where the sun beam ends and the sun begins, there's nowhere where the wave ends and the ocean begins, there's nowhere where God ends and you begin, there's nowhere. So where does God end, where do I begin? You begin to say, God and I are one. And all this time I thought, you remember how much emphasis I gave to you on our, 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 the greatest sin that we can commit is the sin of believing that we are separate. Now you know why the value of those words. Now you come to know. And you yourself, are, you've forgotten that you were ever separate from God. And you have, you have come to this place and then you begin to wonder, I was a real nut thinking that I was separate from God. I was a real nut. Something must have been radically wrong with me. And then, but now I know. I, I do not know where I end and I do not know where God begins. You are one, therefore. If you are one with God and you are one with... You are therefore, you are therefore perfect. Because where does the love of God end and where does your love begin? You remember another class I gave you right in the beginning, don't ever believe that you have loved anyone. Mm -hmm. Now you begin to understand that 
we have never really loved until we have loved this way. This is the way. All other loves are, are shadows of the reality of the truth. So you are the love made into a body so that you can bring love to all other bodies in this world, human beings. But deep inside even know that God is God and you are you. Deep inside you will know that although you and the Father are one and you and God are one, you will always, always remain the created and never the creator. <laughs> and how to explain that? Don't ask me. Even St. Augustine didn't know that. <clears throat> so, you'll never know uh, that at the, while God and, and I are one and there is no Everything is same. He is made of love. I am made of love. Where does the sun end and the sun be begin? All that, all that, take everything. But the bottom line is, you have not created yourself. And so there is, you are not the creator. You are the created and you will always remain the created. Father, there was one time when you had said that we are God. Yeah. I because, still say that. Okay. Right. In this way, we are God, but we are not, we have not created ourselves. Right. Uh, let me see. What example can I give you? Okay. We have, we have, a, say, a parent. Parent. Who is that parent? This parent is a human. Okay? Now this parent has four children. All the children are exactly the flesh, blood, bone structure, hair, eyes, nose, blood, everything. So these are as as long as they as long as we we, we call them humans, they are same. But they are not the parent. But they are as humans, the children and the parent are the same. Because they are human beings. And maybe the grandchildren and the parent are the same. And great great grandchildren and the parent are the same. But they are great great grandchildren who were not created themselves. They were brought into the world by this one. So that's the thing between God and us. I hope I answered it. Yeah, because we're God is the sun and we're the sunbeams. Yeah. Okay, like that. Okay. Okay. No, no, just have, um, Father. But Jesus is God. Yeah. But did Jesus create himself? No. Jesus is God. So that's a that's a, again we enter into the mystery of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. So Jesus did not create himself. So Jesus, what should I say? Okay, let me, I will explain the, something about the Trinity since you asked this question. So I hope it makes sense. So here you have... God is love and love is God. So, that aspect of God which creates, that aspect of God which sustains, that aspect of God which uh, destroys or renews is called creative aspect, creative, or the one who creates is the Father. So that is why the Father created the world. 
But how did he create the world? He created the world through the word. So what is the word? So the word, before the word becomes, now I'm talking to you, but before the word becomes audible, <coughs> or before that, it is a thought. So the word is a thought. But when it is spoken, when the thought is spoken, it does two things. This is highly philosophical. It does two things. First of all, it remains with you. The word remains with you. The thought remains with you. And yet, it has gone from you. So the words that I have spoken from the beginning of this class, the thoughts are, are still with me. They have not left me, but at the same time, they have gone out. That is Jesus. That is the Christ. The word spoken by God now becomes a piece of flesh and comes into this world. Yes? So that's like, we're like Jesus then? Exactly. We are like Jesus. Yeah, that's why we are sons in the sun. We are, we are, so Jesus, we, just as Jesus is the word of God, each of us here is the thought of God in the form of a human being. I preached it in the church also once or twice. Each one is a thought of God in the shape and form of a human being. So here am I, thought of God in the shape of a human being. And that is why we, we cannot think that we are separate because God has, God has only one thought. He doesn't have hundreds and millions of thought. That is why we are one, because of the one thought. Jesus has, God had one son, one word, one. God spoke the word. God spoke the word. And the, and the word was, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The whole... Um, Gospel of John begins with that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, but the Word was not God, and God was not the Word. <laughs> you read that and see how it will uh, it'll go, it will strike you very, very hard in your, in your heart. So do we have to find a pic, do we have to depict God as something? No. You can't depict Him, you only have to experience Him. That's why even in the, in the Mass, when I start the Mass, I said, let us stand before the Lord and experience His presence uh, in, in front of us. We can only experience God. And you know what? Secondly, that experience can never be shared. Because each one experiences God in His, in his own way. can never be shared. So let us not, not try to believe anyone who says, you know I met God and this is what He told me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no. There's do you no do that when they say that? <laughs> you know, I, because we hear sometimes that we are that Jesus is one of his. We're just like Jesus, right? Yes. He came here. Mm. He was the most, but he was the most, you know, aware mm. spiritual person, right? But then, but isn't he different because of the immaculate conception and he, you know? That whole thing, or is that? Jesus got nothing to do with the Immaculate Conception. Hmm? Jesus got nothing to do with the Immaculate Conception. So the, the thing is, what is the Immaculate Conception? And was the mother of Mary was conceived without sin, right? The mother of Jesus. The Mary was no, I thought, I thought it was Mary. actually yeah. Mary's mother and yeah. No, no, no. Mary is the from the moment of her conception, from the moment of her conception, she had no sin. Right. I remember right. that whole thing I showed you of how we, yeah. we get all the vibrations of everyone yeah. and there. So that was, Mary was without that from the moment, because God, according to theologians, wanted to have a level playing field between the first Eve and the new Eve. Oh, okay. So the first Eve was, was born without, without any input from anybody else, right. so she was immaculately conceived right. or made immaculate. So the second Eve, God said, let me start and see now, 
I'm giving them a level playing field. So she brought two sons into the world, Cain and Abel, and they killed each other. He brought one, she brought one son into the world and he gave his life for all his brothers and sisters. Okay, so that's a somewhat answer the question of the Trinity. But it's, it's not adequate. It's not adequate. Uh -oh. Keep going with the Spirit then, with the Holy Spirit? To finish that? No, I, I only told you of, of the Father and the Son. Okay. I did not talk about the Holy Spirit. So, now, once, so here you have the Creator and the Created. The Creator and the Creator, so these are the thoughts. Now, so the, the aspect of creation is called the father. The aspect of brotherhood, the aspect of, of, uh, of shepherd, the aspect of community, the aspect of sharing of love, the aspect of healing, the aspect of forgiveness does not come from the father. It comes here. Now, the third one is to, for us, therefore, for all of us who are thoughts of God, so we have the Holy Spirit. That guides and leads us. So what is the Holy Spirit? That's the, what we have been talking in simple words, the vibration that, that make us go in a certain direction that sensibility that makes us see the door, the door which is opening, that, that, that uh, experience something deep inside, gut level feeling, those are all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the church, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are further expanded. All the sacraments cannot be uh, celebrated without the calling upon the Holy Spirit. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy. For baptism, again, let your child be baptized for confirmation, for marriage. All the sacraments are come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings the Spirit of God into, into time and space. Somewhat, okay? I hope you all are happy. <laughs> no, I'm not happy, but I don't, I don't have a better answer than this. As you look back upon the lessons that we have gone, gone through all this time, and you will begin to see all this, these months and months, you have got so many experiences, you have got so many insights, you have learned, you have got so much of knowledge, you have got so many uh, emotional uh, pushing, All these things, therefore, have come to you during these months of, of uh, doing this course that, that, uh, that God is bringing to you. And you begin to look back and you tell yourself all these things were given or catered to me, or put, put in the plate for me, dished out to me by God, who brought me to this, to this Bible spirituality course, kept me going, and here I have now reached that, knowing that this, all these experiences that you had in this class, even the experiences of, of talking to each other, the experience of new friendship, the experience of sitting down in this class, the experience of saying, Abun the Bushmaya. <laughs> all those so many experiences you had, they all they were dished out to you by God because you had the intention of 
reaching into the heart of God and God saw that intention and here you are, he gave it to you. So, and now as you, you, you look back further than that and you know what kind of a life you had, how you, how you looked at the experiences, how you looked at, the, at your perception, how you looked at your judgments. Now, your attitude to judge, condemn and gossip and all is like an old story. It's like, I used to gossip once upon a time. Now I lost the taste for it. Somehow it dropped by the way. And so you, you will see this. All these memories of this will come and you will say to yourself, once I did that, and thank the Lord, I'm out from it, and here am I. So that is a transformation that you may be not yet aware, because there's a saying in scripture which says, and the old order passes away, and a new order begins. So through this months and months and months, the old order of believing in separation, of, of, of believing in gossip, of judging, condemning, um, and all that hassle has finally taken off your old identity, taken off those clothes that you were wearing. Remember the Halloween costume that we were all wearing? <laughs> that costume is gone. <clears throat> and now you have put on the robes of Christ. Believe that, that the, the Halloween costume by which we, were, we, were, we found great pleasure in, uh, in making everybody afraid of us and we being afraid of everybody. I'm afraid of you and you're afraid of me, so let us live in fear of each other. Now the Halloween costume is removed and you begin to see your own perfect radiance and beauty and you see the reflection of your own uh, radiance and beauty everywhere around you, but therefore you can't help doing the job that God has given to you to see nothing but the good, holy and beautiful. That's the job we have. What a great job. So you have therefore lost your identity and you have put on a A new identity. But isn't that our true identity now? Yes. This is your you have found your original identity by dropping off all that you thought that you were. And therefore this identity remains in you as an old memory for which you carry hang. So it's like you know. You played, you played with a teddy bear when you were young and now if you go back to your ancestral home you'll see, oh that was a teddy bear I played when I was three years old and you go do your work as if nothing had happened. But that time you loved it. I still have a teddy bear. Hmm? I still have a teddy bear. It still has a teddy bear. Better grow fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, it's time as we go through this for you to turn your back once and for all on your past, to turn your back on the Halloween costume, to turn your back on, on, your, on, your, on your identity that you have and to embrace the new you by, by, by sitting down with the new you. Imagine that you are there and you're, you, you're going into centering prayer or going into meditation or just sitting down there and a thought comes into you, I'm tired of watching this TV, just switch it off and be in silence. And tell yourself, I'm going to sit with the new me. And then ask yourself questions. Or what is this new me like? And let the new you reveal itself. You don't give an answer, then that's your ego again. Let the new you reveal itself. It might be silence. So the new you is saying, 
I can remain in silence much longer than ever before. The new you will, will give you certain experiences, certain feelings, certain uh, nothingness. And you'll, you'll love to remain like that with your eyes closed, hands on your, on your heart or on your, on, your, on your knees. And there you are and the time is passing and you are, you are experiencing your new self. It's a great experience to, to, and if you do it well, the, at the end of this experiencing of your new self, which you can do over and over and over again, you, if you do it well, you will, you will automatically end with a up wave of saying thank you. Automatically you'll say thank you. Because you'll be so pleased at the, at the gratuitous, gratuitous gift that is given to you, a new you has been created, you can't help but say thank you. You can't help. And the more you say thank you, the more you feel like saying thank you again. So you, that, is, uh, that is the new being that has come into your life. This is the time for you to step into the light. of your future because your future is no longer unknown. Your future is no longer fearful. Your future is no, no longer needs to be planned. Because, because, why are you smiling? You have arrived. Yeah, <laughs> because you have arrived. And you know what? If you have arrived, what does it mean? It means that you care, you don't, you don't ever think of your future at all. And why don't you ever think of your future at all? Because you are enjoying the present so much by seeing the good, holy and beautiful to hell with the future. I am happy now. I don't care. Because we look to the future so that it will be better than the present. But the present itself is so good, you don't want to step into the future. So future comes and it goes. It's the same as today. Because all that you are doing is to see the good, holy and beautiful. So you can keep this this refrain in your mind, I have been born and created into this world to do nothing more than to see the good, holy and beautiful. <coughs> and imagine that this, this way of life, good, holy and beautiful, this way of life was God God planned for you from the beginning of time. Wow. God planned it for you. He made it for you. You and I just dumped it in the, in the garbage can and said, let me start on myself. And then you, that's called, you know, why did I do it or not? That also goes away because in that also you will see the good, holy and beautiful. There's not, no regrets. I've arrived here. No regrets about what happened in the past because I'm not there. Here I'm just good, holy and beautiful. That's it. So, any questions so far? Yes? If, um, before we actually decided to come to Earth and we were, we were all in the good, holy and beautiful since God had planned this for us from the yes. beginning of time. Yes. So now, when we pass from this earthly world, mm. and if we have this with us, that we are good, holy, mm. and beautiful, and would, if we decide to come back again, would we be aware at that point so we bring it with us and not have to go through this whole time span again and then learn it again? So it is like this. Okay, again, 
I'm giving you the off the cuff answer. So, so what happens? So for those for those people who believe in rebirth and all those things, so you are talking about a rebirth. So here you have you someone. You said, Father, that you were in, the, in the, one of the classes. You said to us, you were not coming back. Yeah. Uh, you know, back, and yeah. then you changed it a little. Yeah. At another time, but I don't know where you are now. No, <laughs> see, the, the, so this this is what I have to say. See, there is the theory of reincarnation in uh, ninety percent of spiritualities of this world. Catholicism doesn't hold on to it. So since I'm a Catholic priest. I, as if, as if officially, I don't want to say anything about reincarnation. But personally, and if you'll keep it here, <laughs> but but personally, personally, I still have other thoughts about it. So we keep it there. So therefore, now what the other spiritualities say about this reincarnation? So here you have. Someone who's, who incarnates for the first time, okay, mm -hmm. learns certain lessons. <clears throat> now these lessons are learnt. He doesn't have to learn it again. You got it? Then it reincarnates the second time. Learns other lessons and doesn't have to reincarnate. Incarnate, so as long as it keeps on learning, what it has learnt, it doesn't need to repeat. So it learns something else, it learns something else, it learns something else. Till finally, there, there comes a time when I don't need to learn anything more. And these guys in, in other religions, they are called... <coughs> ascended Masters. So they have ascended there. And so what these guys do is they plan the future of these people. They say, okay, now you want to go there and learn? Yeah. Who wants to be his mother? Who wants to be his wife? Who wants to be the husband? Okay, now you guys go. You'll be born there. You'll be born there. So these ascended masters get together and, and give uh, directions to how this person has to, has to learn something in this world. But uh, this is the spirituality of the world, okay? So that's where, so that's why you find me mixed, because I'm also teaching you the spiritualities of the whole world, but at the same time also Bible spirituality. If I was not doing Bible spirituality per se, then the whole thing would have taken a, another route. Okay. So any question therefore on this again? Okay, great. I want to end this with the, with this. this Father, with this. do some world religions believe that Jesus reincarnated? No. Yeah. So if you can look at the at the board, and we shall say this prayer before we end the class. You can see it. What is here? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Oh, oh, yeah. Good job. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, start. I and my Father are one. My purpose is to embrace creation, that the good, the holy, and the beautiful may extend through this body mind. I delight in the love of my Creator. I am devoted to the extension of love. I celebrate the peace I find in the embrace of every brother and sister. My destiny is to reflect God in this world. Amen. Amen. Can we have a copy of that? Yeah, I'll send it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, just for your for your information, what I told you at the beginning. Was it? Yeah.